to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. Today, we are talking about technology. And we've talked about it a couple of times over the last several months. It's an important topic. It's timely. And it's something we need to think about as we move and grow our businesses in this ever-changing, crazy world, right? The thing about technology and the reason I like the conversations like the one I'm going to have today with Jillian is that there is so much out there, it's sort of impossible to try everything out ourselves and sift through it and see what would work for us. And don't worry, right? You don't have to. All you have to do is sit back and listen. You can take some notes if you want, but we'll link all the great apps and tools that we talk about today in the show um, notes so that you can click through and decide for yourself after listening to my guest go through them. So my guest is Jillian Lair. She's back today with a rundown of all the tech-driven systems that she uses in her firm, Morris Lair Interiors, with her design and business partner, Alicia Held Morris. They do business, if you remember, out of Des Moines, Iowa. Jillian was on the show just a little while ago, and the thing was, we intended on that show to talk about the technology that she uses and the systems that she uses, but we, but we ended up getting down the rabbit hole of the finances and how she manages and tracks those, and I just wasn't going to let that topic go once we were underway. So that was episode 870. It's also linked in the show notes. It's worth a listen, not just for the conversation on knowing your numbers and processes, and how to work on that, but to hear Jillian's backstory and more about how she and Alicia operate their firm. We touched on project management software, but there is so much more to discuss. And today in this bonus episode with Jillian, you're going to get that. Jillian is a trained engineer. Her brain is wired differently than most of our brains in this audience, right? She thinks in systems and solutions, which is why she's always seeking the help of tech to run her company. She's also an experienced college lecturer, making her excellent at explaining these concepts in ways that even I can understand. Okay. Now, before we get started, I want you to understand that this is not a commercial for any of the, any of these products in one way or another. We are actually simply talking about what Jillian uses and how she uses it. The real benefit to hearing about someone else's hands-on experience is that you get to figure it out and understand it a little bit before you decide yourself what to dive into. So I am happy to have Jillian and Lair back on the show with us today. Hey, Jillian, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business again. Oh, thank you. It's so good to be back. Well, we know how what happened to us last time. So you were here a couple of months ago. We'll put the episode in the show notes. And we intended to have a conversation about, te about technology. And we ended up having a conversation about managing finances, which, you know, you know, I always say to people, don't worry about the interview in real life. Like if I want to go down a rabbit hole and I think it's a good, interesting conversation, we're going to go there. And, and a lot of times it's fine. But I also knew we wanted to come back and circle back to this because you do use a lot of technology um, in your business, like many, like most of us and interior designers, obviously, uh, as well. But I do get quite a bit of questions about what technology to use. And, you know, oh, I looked into this, but it doesn't do this, that, and this and that. And I'm just like, well, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Does it do this for you? Yeah. Okay, great. You know, so you use a lot of technology. And um, I guess what I want to start off with is that you heard the episode with Hilaire Pickett Martin, and that was also 
kind of that was a project manager talking about what they use in their back end. And you voxered me after that. And you started to tell me, you know, some of the things that you did. And one of the things you said to me, which caught my eye, was that you use Asana for your internal project management. And even though it's capable of doing external, like to client facing project management, like Sandra Funk does with the standard, you use Basecamp for the external communication. So tell me about that. What what goes on there? Well, so I did pivot. Um, we did pivot as a firm to using Asana internally because I have taken the standard. So I'm in Sandra's group and I've gone through all of that multiple times and keep up with it whenever she does updates. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. And it's great. And then I've also um, been through Toby Fairley's course and she mm. also uses Asana and both of them offered uh, templates for Asana that you could download. So it was a no brainer that they both had these systems and we could just download them and customize them to how we like to work. And I'll be perfectly honest, we're still in the process of doing that and figuring out exactly how we want to use Asana to run our projects. But that's very much on the internal side. We, before we were using Asana, we were using Basecamp for everything. And what we found was that Basecamp works really great for us to create a portal online for our clients so that we can have everything that's needed for the project to communicate with them and the contractor in one place. But we didn't want our internal stuff (laughs) junking that up or becoming public when it shouldn't be, you know, we wanted to keep our, our uh, mess <laughs> behind wraps and, you know, or our, our thought process behind wraps and then have a very clean space that was just for the client. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Basecamp is really great for that because it is a flat fee per month. It's not by user. Now, I do think that we were grandfathered in on a very good rate. So it might not be as good as it it was when we got it, but um, there's one rate per month. And then we can have as many projects as we want and we can invite the clients to those projects. And within the base camp structure, you can also invite the contractors as well. And you can choose if you want something that you post or communicate to be visible just to your internal team, or if you want it to be visible to the client as well. So the only thing that's like not the best is you can't choose between visibility to the client and or the contractor. So you kind of have to accept that anything the client sees, the contractor can see. So we tend to use that more less for money type stuff on furnishings or things like that and more for like the renovation side. Okay. So um so one of some of the great stuff about it, it are that it has um like a document structure so you can create folders so we have like basic uh project folders like documents and photos and plan files and specifications so like our spec book for example will mm. end up living in base camp um and then it also has um the ability so when you upload say let's say the client posts a photo of a fireplace and they really love the way that fireplace looks and they um but they don't love all of it they just love the stone and the mantle but not the rest of it you can comment on the files and you can have a thread like on a file where people like at each other back and forth and they'll get notified so they could be like at Jillian, like, I love this fireplace and it'll have a timestamp and I'll get it like on my phone, like a text message. And then I can at the, at Jane, well, that's great. I love that too. And, but the husband can weigh in and be like, don't like it. And it's all there (laughs) tied to that specific photo. So instead of going back and forth in your email and be like, where's that thing with that photo? And he said he didn't like it, but she did. It's all there under the photo. So that's one thing. So you can do that in PDFs, photos, like basically any file that you post. It also has a calendaring feature, which we don't use a ton, but if you really wanted to get into it, you could like totally like plan out your whole calendar for the project in it. It has um, an e- like a messaging system, like email. So I was trying to actually sell my client or my husband on this for his business because he's also <laughs> a designer salesperson. And because I was like, it's so great because all of your email for your projects is just within 
base camp. So like, if you don't want to look at any of the emails for that project, like don't open the project. It's not like when you open your email and you see like yes. Woo, all this stuff down there, you're just like, nope, I only want to see the email for this project. And it's all contained right within that project. And, and you can set it up so that you get a text message when you get one of those messages, which I have, but I don't want to get emails about them. So they right. don't go into my email inbox. I just go there and I'm like, oh, yep, I got messages like every day and I just check it and respond to them in that system. On the client side, if they're not into it, they don't want to do it, they can get it all dumped to their email. So if your client's like, nope, not learning it, don't want to do it, you're like, it's it's cool. You don't have to do it. Just It will just go right to your email. You can respond right from your email. You never have to open it. But the one day you decide maybe you want it, it's all there for you. So the great and part- when go ahead. when they when they if your client stays outside of Basecamp and they're in and they're in email and they answer in their email, it populates in Basecamp for yes. you. Yes, right. it does. Okay, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, but the thing I really love is that it is all on your phone too. So you download mm-hmm. the app and you sign in. The client only sees one project. You see all the projects. Right. But it's all on your phone. So if you're out at the job site or you're at the thing, you're like, where's the picture of the fireplace? I'm not going to Dropbox. I'm not looking through my phone photos. I am go to Basecamp and I look in the photos folder or I search it because it has really great search features. Because you can search by like, well, um, what did Jane, where's everything Jane has ever posted in her project and it will show me. And so it's super easy to find stuff. So anyway, love Basecamp for that. They also have to do's. So when we send out our proposals and there's a list of deliverables for that proposal, we'll load them all into Basecamp. And then when they're done, like, oh, we went and selected the slabs for the countertops. We told you get one slab selection and one revision. We went and we went to a revision meeting. Check check with the date, with the time, checked off. So there's like a trail of everything you do. Everything has timestamps and it's all in there. And you can be like, oh yeah, remember I checked that off. Yeah. We went to that meeting that day. So um, it's really great. And one thing we do send out um, expediting reports that we generate in our procurement software. We send those out every other Friday and I do, we email those right now and I do want to get to a point where those are all posted in Basecamp as well. Like I said, we've kind of been splitting off the renovation part from the like remodel Mm. or new construction part, but um, yeah, for the ease of the clients, I'd like to move that over and keep that there too. Nice. Nice. So what's interesting is, is I didn't expect to say this to you, but we just talked off air a little bit about my Doma studio versus studio designer. Mm-hmm. Okay. And for all of you guys who weren't privy to our off air conversation, um, Jillian was basically saying that, you know, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, when she first looked at my Doma studio, it was only a year out the gate being invented and her bookkeeper is on studio designer. And so what's interesting though, is I am now in the process of putting window works on my Doma studio for just our project work with interior designers. And I have just had three, one to three hour meetings with Dixie over the last three weeks. And I'm going to tell you what, my Doma studio does everything you just said. Cool. So it really has changed and grown and added features since you looked at it. And I say that now because if you are already on my Doma studio listening and you just went, Oh my God, all that stuff that Jillian is talking about is amazing. You know, you have a Maserati that you're driving around at 40 miles an hour, basically, because that's the thing. Now for you to use it in base camp for us, I wanted exactly what you said. I wanted this work out of email. That was my thing. I spent, you know, five, six months back in the weeds at Window Works while Kimberly was out on maternity leave. And I, on the regular, I could have like taken the phone and pulled it out of the wall and threw it against a plate of glass. Like I just Mm -hmm. was, you know, the conversations that were happening, the emails that were going on and the inefficiencies in being able to manage the information from so many different interior designers on so many very important details on so many drapery projects. I was, I I, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, this 
is archaic what's happening mm -hmm. here doing this in email it's absolutely archaic to manage a project in email in my opinion at, in this day and age well and i'm sure my doma does this too but the thing and this is why i was like telling my husband about base camp the thing that was so important to me was that we have a multi-person firm right it's not just yes. me anymore right so it should not just be in my Email. email and gosh right. what would that be doing to everybody if they were copied on every actually i've worked oh at firms God. i've worked at firms we had to copy everybody on every email i won't get into that but anyway um this is so great because that way like anybody can look at that project and see all the communication like right. this is not stuff private between me and the client that like right for some reason i wouldn't want somebody on my team to see i don't even can't even imagine what that would be but like right. you know this is this is like stuff that everybody should have privy be privy to this knowledge and have access to it because if something happens to me like they should be able to get all the information without sorting through 10,000 emails over the emails. last Exactly. Here. Or how about if you just want to go on vacation exactly. for a week? Exactly. Exactly. You know, forget something happens to you. And that, you know, what I also learned is what we're going to be able to do is we've got four different salespeople at Window Works. All four of them are dealing with interior designers at some level or another. So there is an overall admin account. So Rich doesn't need to be in the weeds on Kim's jobs and Kim doesn't need to be on the weeds on Richard's jobs because we have a rich and a Richard, right? <laughs> Let's just make life even crazier, right? Um, but, you know, I want to be able to be in the weeds if I choose to on everybody's job. So like there's an overall admin and you can't keep me out of your accounts. But like to your point, if you've got peers, it's you and Alicia, you are partners. You need mm. to see everything and you should see anything. And I can't imagine, like you said, there's ever going to be a thing that you're going to do, say, or take care of that you don't want her to know. But to the other point, does Kim need to be bogged down on 16,000 communications that Rich or Richard is having? Absolutely not. But do I want to go in and review and make sure projects are moving along? Just observe. Yes, ma'am. Yep. I do. So if I'm the designer, if I'm the principal owner of the firm and I've got four designers working under me, yeah, I want to see what's happening. Yep. And so I love this. I love, and I, it's fine for me that Basecamp works with you. Whatever works. Like I'm, you know what I'm about. I'm about just get something that works. And email is not the answer. Yep. Email has, I, I, don't get me started on email. I can't, I can't with it. It's just, it's, it is, it is, yes, thank you for technology, but no, ma'am, it is the least efficient place to run a business. It absolutely makes me crazy. Well, and like to that end, text messaging, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and so I don't know when it was, maybe like six months ago or maybe a little bit longer than that. Um, I had a point where I had lost something that was in a text message that was important, like, or forgotten oh. it or what, cause I got a text and I go to bed super early. So I'm like, you know, eight o'clock, my phone shut down. I don't want to see anything from anybody. And so I got a text the next day I have a bunch of texts and I scroll through them and it promptly like poop goes out my mind. And I'm like, right. then I can't find it. Right. And later yeah. I cannot find where it is. So I was like, okay, there's got to be a better way. And it was something internal. It wasn't from a client. And yeah. so that was when we got slack. And so I know a lot of people are probably already using Slack. And I had always thought, oh, it's overkill. There's only, there's like four to five of us now at any given time. And I'm like, that's overkill for such a small team. We don't really need that. How would we use it? And honestly, it's been so great um, because everything that would be a text message between me and our procurement manager, Dara, or me and um, the person that helps us drafting, Nate, you know, that is all in channels specific to that project. Um, so when Dara goes to the warehouse and she checks in stuff for a project and she's taking photos of it, like if there's something wrong with something um, and there's a piece of damage or whatever, and she needs to see it, she takes a picture, she puts it in Slack in that project. So it's all in that project in Slack. And so again, it's like, instead of having stuff all in our email and cause anybody that knows uses Gmail knows it's like a bottomless pit. Oh like my God. how do you ever find anything again? And like, I think I'm fairly good at finding stuff, but when it's threaded and you're going through all these, you know, nested oh things, it's like, okay, I'm done with that. And I don't want it in my text. So what do we do? And so Slack was the answer to that for us because, and it's fun too. We like it. Um, and one of the things that we started doing a month or so ago, two months ago, 
that's been really awesome in Slack is I read a book by Donald Miller. He's the guy who wrote um, How to Build a Story Brand, which is an excellent Mm, book. And he just came out with another new book. He's kind of on the podcast circuit right now. And Ah. it's um, something like uh, Six Steps to Scale Your Small Business or How to Scale Your Small Business in Six Steps. Um, And in it, he talks about like the meetings that you should be having. And one of them reminded me of when I was back in software development and we'd have, we were all in person and we'd have a stand up meeting every day, which literally meant like five to 10 minutes and you stand up and what are you doing today? What are you doing today? Whatever. Well, in our office now, some of us work from home some days or we're out and about or we're doing whatever. And um, we're not always standing in the office at nine o'clock in the morning. So we started a channel called the daily check-in. And we prefaced it with zero. So it's at the top of the alphabetical list. And every morning, everybody goes in as soon as they start work. And they, this is my top three things I'm going to get done for today. And then these were the things I said I would do yesterday. And did I get them done or not? Wow. And so every day, we know what we're like. I know that Alicia's top three priorities that she has to get done are this. And she knows what mine are. And we know what the staff is working on. And it's been great because there'll be days like Nate will post he's going to work on this. And I'm like, oh, no, I need you to work on this instead. And so because I have this meeting tomorrow or I went to this walkthrough and this thing changed. And so this is really critical to get this done today instead. So instead of like coming in at you know, noon after a meeting and be like, so what are you working on? And he's like, oh, I spent three <laughs> hours working on this thing. Um, like we just had a project get canceled um, for personal reasons. And it's like, well, I'm glad you didn't spend three hours working on that, you know? Right. So right. Um, that, that little system right there, that Slack daily check-in, which I'm sure you could do in another system as well, but Slack's been great for that. And um, it's really help me like stay up to date on what's going on without having to be like physically present every single morning at a specific time. So, so talk to me about Slack. It's been mentioned on the show several times over the years. Um, and what I'm just not getting is like, for example, you mentioned, okay, so somebody's on, you know, the site and they're, you know, checking a piece of slab or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't really call the example you just used. And you're like, but that picture can get uploaded to Slack. Mm-hmm. So just from my understanding of it, why wouldn't that picture get uploaded to that client's project on Basecamp? And what's the advantage in putting it into Slack? Why is that a thing? Why is that different? So, so base, first of all, Basecamp is just for the client. So we don't want, this isn't like for them to see oh, damaged yeah. items. That's at the, right. And uh, Okay. And right. With, this is not like, yeah. here's the slab we picked. It's officially in Basecamp. It's like yeah. your, your team member is saying, Hey, do you like this lab or yep. this lab is damaged? I need you to see it. And instead of it being a text message. Yep. Ah. Instead of and it so, being a text message, it goes into Slack because if it's in Slack, everybody could see it. And so okay. the other great thing about this is like, okay, so we haven't given everybody in our office a phone. Um, we certainly could, but they have Slack on their phone, right? But you can turn Slack off when you're done working. So like okay. instead of them getting te- like it's so The other night I had like a bunch of things I wanted to tell people. So, and I know some of them leave their Slack on, even though they're not working. So what I did was I went into Slack and I wrote all these messages and I scheduled them all to send at nine o'clock in the morning. Okay. So the next morning, everybody got, can you work on this today? Can you do this when you get in? Blah, blah, blah. Like I need you to like check this out. But it it all went through at nine o'clock in the morning instead of like 10 o'clock at night when I was thinking about it. Right. Okay. And whereas if you were thinking about it without Slack your only two options would have been to text everybody in a group chat or email everybody. And now here come like the yeah. dumb, you know, you know what string yeah. of emails. And yeah. I guess you could put it in an Asana task, but honestly, I don't want things that need like one word answers in an Asana task. Like that's right. just bogging up the whole system. Like Asana is right. like for, this is the project flow. It's not for like, did you do this thing? Could you check into this? Could you make sure we have soda water in the fridge? That is not for right. Asana. That's right. Like, now, yeah. now, Jillian, you you and I are on Voxer together. Mm-hmm. So tell me the difference. See, I've not used Slack. So tell me the difference because that's what I use Voxer for all day long. If I want a, an official task done, I go into Monday.com and I make an official task and I assign somebody. But if I'm just like, hey, Mary Ali this or Jose Danielle this or Stephanie this or Nicole that, I either go to the individual Voxer with that person or we have the marketing Voxer, or we have all the peeps, which is everybody, all hands on deck. Everybody needs to know this. So what is, 
the difference? Would you, in order to it to be more efficient, would you have to then have to have a Voxer channel per client, whereas yeah. in Slack, is that what it yeah. is? Tell me and, about and that. And you can, you can direct message in Slack too. So if it's like not related to anything, but I just want to send like a text. So I look at it as like work texting and setting a boundary with people. Like I don't expect you to be available via text message when we're at work, when you're not at right. work, right? Right. Um, and that and when the, you are at work, I do. But that's the same with me as Voxer, though. Yeah. But that's the same with me and Voxer. So, they know so once it, 5 o'clock comes, I don't yeah. care when you answer me. It's, 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 you know what I mean? Right. But they won't even get a notification on this. Okay. But, like, so, but the other thing is, too, like, so Slack, it has all the channels. So then it can also link to Dropbox. It can link to Google Drive. Like, you can link it to Loom. Like, there's a lot that you can do with it. That okay. is probably even beyond because we're just using the free version, to be honest. Okay. Um, but it's more like it's not voice messages. It's more texting with photos or files or whatever. And I know you can oh, text you- in Voxer too, but it's not voice yes. messages. It's text. Oh, so it's not voice messages. No. Oh, see, then it won't work for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let <laughs> me know, see. I started, I hired a new integrator last month and she was like, I usually use Slack for communication. I'm like, I usually use. Oh, Voxer. you can, you can, like, uh, you can do voice messages. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Because I'm just like, and I said to her, I said, look, I can try it. You could teach an old dog a new trick if you want. I said, and so she's like, you know, maybe I'll use Slack with the whole team in Voxer with you. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? I would try it. Yeah. Like, but I'm also. Like we do have a Lou University mm. Voxer chat with all the instructors, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I don't know, maybe they're similar yeah. and maybe they're not. I don't know. I right? mean, the other things you can do too are like, so you can have files. So we're just using the free version, but I know um, that if you pay per person or whatever, you can um, have files in it and stuff like that. So, oh, you're going to the warehouse. Here's the file for this. It could be a link to a Dropbox and then it's in there and then you can comment on it and stuff. You can send files back and forth. Like I said, you can send the photos back and forth. But the main thing is they like store everything in there and you can search it. So like it's highly, that's like one of their things that they market is it's highly searchable. So oh, I, that's probably not happening in Boxer. Yeah. So it's like, you know, if like over the course of a year, like it's a year later, like I remember this one time I was working on this project and the cabinet person went out and field checked um, the measurement for a vanity and it was wrong, but she had texted me that she went and did it and it was wrong. And so when it went in wrong, they tried to blame us and say that we did it. I'm like, no, now it took me like a couple hours to go through all my text messages and find that because I couldn't. There was no way to like search what I was looking for and it wasn't with a folder or anything like that. And I eventually right. found it, but this is supposed to be better at that. Okay. So. Okay. So, and, and the thing is, regardless of it, like if I'm trying to do it in Voxer or you're doing it in Slack, I mean, obviously there's a lot more moving parts in mm-hmm. an interior design firm. If you've got six, eight, 10, 15 projects going on at a time and I love, I love that idea of the communication is simple. It's direct. It's contained to the topic matter that you're talking about. And again, I also have that same thing where mostly I'm on the weekends, you know, loading up all the stuff. And I'm like literally putting at the top of the, you know, the Voxer, I will type in it. This is for Monday. And then I put an arrow and then I leave like a 20 minute Voxer. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not, there's not, there's no emergencies in podcasting. We're not saving the world here. So, So. (laughs) okay. All right. So that's pretty um, interesting. And I know that a lot of designers do use Slack, but I've always wondered what the deal is. Now, one of the things that, you know, it's interesting because you use Harvest for time tracking, but that, of course, that does happen in my Doma studio too. So is there features in Harvest that you like better or then, or Studio Designer doesn't do time tracking or what's the deal? Studio does do time tracking. It's a little clunky. So again, Harvest is on your phone. It's okay. super easy. You keep like, we just keep it either on our browser or on our phone all day. And it's super easy to like customize all the activities. There's templates for project. Like, you know, we, we find a thing we want to track and we're like, um, oh, just add a new task for that. And so it's really easy to run reports and categorize it. And so like at the end of a project, it's really easy to export all the time from that project and say, oh, this person spent this amount of time doing this. This person spent this amount of time doing this. And like oh, that nice. we, so we use that data because we are on flat fee for most projects we use that data to help calculate like our fees for future projects um so it's really great like on the reporting side and then you can also um 
do expenses in it. So like if somebody on the staff like pays for something personally and then all their mileage is recorded in it too. But I think, oh. again, it all comes down to like, it has to be easy. It has to be simple. Actually, I'm just reading uh, Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg, um, which is another great habits book. I know everybody loves Atomic Habits, which I've read, but yes. um, this one's good too. And he talks about like, it has to be a low barrier. Like it has to be easy. Yes. And so it's like, okay, well, studio designer, the app was terrible. It's clunky online. It's like, I'm not doing it if that's what it right. is. So um, Harvest is great because then at the end of every month, I just go through, I look at everybody's time, pay hourly employees, make sure they get reimbursed, create all the client invoices right away. Alicia can review them right in the app. We adjust them. We send them right from there. The client can pay right from the link in their email. It's like, wow. boom. Like good client, yeah. like the good clients, I mean, they get the email, you got money like 10 seconds after you sent the right. invoice. So um, I, we really like it for that. And I know I've heard other people say that they use it too, but I mean, take everything away from it. It's like, it's here on my phone and it's super yes. easy to record stuff. So yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. You're right. If it's not easy to do, it doesn't matter how good it is. It's not going to get done. No. Right. And then one of the things that when um, Hilaire Pickett Martin was on the podcast, and of course we'll put the episode in the show notes, you, she mentioned that she uses, is it called, does it, does it pronounce Milano, Milano, whatever it was, but from Milano, I think it's Milano. Milano. Yeah. So from that, then you looked into it and now you're using it. So yes. talk to us about that. <laughs> so uh, I had looked at it a lot. You know, I love tech and I love, you know, oh, there's a new thing. I want to try it out. And so I looked into it a long time ago and I was like, oh, I don't know what I would do with this. And then when she mentioned it, I was like, I'm going to check it out again. And again, it hooked me in because it's so easy to use it. So like, for projects. So you can create projects in it and those projects have boards. So really similar to like everybody's used to using Pinterest, right? To gather their inspiration. Well, we've had several incidents over the last couple of years where we've been wanting to work on a project or we need something for a project and we've got everything stored in Pinterest and Pinterest has broken, right? Um, and there have been a couple of times where I've said to Alicia, like, you know, if this is like really our most important thing that we do, like, should we be doing it on a free service that has outages, you know, <laughs> in the middle of when we need the information. So we kind of had it out there, but like, you know, we've been using Pinterest, gosh, like 13, what, I think since ever it's been out, right? Right. Like over a decade, it's really hard to get off that yes. habit of like, oh, here's my little pin it button. Well, Mila Note has a button like that too. And actually, I found that it works in some places where Pinterest doesn't work. And Mila Note pulls in the link. It pulls in the picture. It's really slick. You can put it on a board. You can drag and drop and organize it. But what I really loved about their boards versus Pinterest, so Pinterest, everything is in columns, right? And just kind of flows. And it formats all the pictures the same way. Well, mm. in Mila Note, you have a board and it's got like a dot grid on it, which I think you can turn off. And you can keep the pictures any size and proportion you want and you can crop them and you can put notes on them and you can have the a link and you can layer them on top of each other so you can create mood boards in it and so oh. you can export your screen so you could do your whole mood board in meal and note that you've clipped using the internet and then export it to a pdf you can export it to a word doc where they're all in a row um, and it's collaborative so like if there's two of us on the project you can like at somebody and they'll get a notification but the other cool thing about it was like right on the board you can have links to like uh, Google Drive documents to Dropbox folders. You can upload PDFs. So they're like stored right in the board. They're not like on and over their service. And then you can also have to-do lists that you can check off right on the board. So like I have a board for a bathroom and it's got all the inspiration photos, but then it also has like, well, these are the actual selections and these are all the things I still need to do. Oh, and wow. right there, I can see, like, I still need a robe hook. I still need a towel bar. I still need a pink color. And so I, like, it, but it's, like, for a visual person who likes to be organized, yes. it was super nice because it's not bound by that strict column format of Pinterest. So it's a little yes. bit more freedom um, within it. And the other thing we liked was kind of, like, how Pinterest has sections. So, like, 
let's say you're doing a new construction house in Pinterest and you've got a section for lighting and a section for finishes and a section for furniture and whatever. Well, you can do that here, but they're all on their own boards. And then you can have boards within boards. So let's say you're doing lighting, but then you want to have a board within lighting that's for like table lamps or floor lamps, or it's for the great room versus the kitchen, or you want to have bathrooms or whatever. It's all, however you want to split it out. You can have multiple boards within boards. And I, I haven't yeah. tested it to see how deep you could go with that, but you know, so you can <laughs> nest stuff um, in it, in it, inside of it. So I've really liked playing with it so far. We've been piloting it on a few projects. And um, one thing that's cool too is like, so let's say you've got floor plans and they're in a PDF. You can upload that PDF right to the board. So there's a little button you can click and then the PDF opens. So no digging through Dropbox. Where's the PDF oh, that whoa. goes with this? It's all right there. It's all right there. Or you could screenshot the floor plan and put it there as an image. You could do both. And then they have like, you can like drag little arrows and point to spots on it and have little notes and stuff. So it's, um, it's pretty cool. And again, the clipper works really well from your phone, your iPad and your desktop. So it's super easy. And then you can look at it on your phone, um, and pull it up. So it's like, I just want everything to be accessible wherever I am. The minute it's like mm-hmm. not accessible is when I'm kind of like start to lose interest in it. Cause we're just right. out and about so much. Right. Right. So, and is this a tool that you ultimately are creating these boards and all of this product collaboration on there that you share with the client or is this an internal tool with you and Alicia and your team? It's internal, but there is a presentation feature. So like this bathroom I was working on, we were at very loose level, like conceptual phase. So like at that level, I don't want to spend all the time to like go in and set up a Canva board or an InDesign board and like format everything and download all the images and have it be perfect. Right. I just want some quick feedback on you know, here's what I've got. What do you think? Whatever. And you can like delete stuff really quickly. So there's a present mode. So you can put everything on there. And then if you've got a big monitor, you're on zoom or whatever, you just go into present mode. It puts all the other tools and stuff away. And you've just got this big, beautiful board with all the images layered and the notes and whatever you want to have on there. Very nice. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Cause there is that stage where it's not, I'm not making, I'm not building, you know, like painting the Sistine Chapel here. I'm just getting an idea. Like, is this a good keep going? Right. To me, it's like that conceptual phase and it's like for organizing information. It's not like my formal presentation. It probably never will be, but like where we need to be looser. And the other thing I liked about it versus like creating a Canva board or an InDesign board or whatever There is no bounds to the board. So if you want to scroll down, you want to scroll to the right, you want to make it bigger, you want to zoom out, you can put as much stuff on there as you want and then zoom in and out or over or down or whatever. And you're not constrained to like, oh, I have to make it like the size of a piece of paper or whatever. And I'm, you know, I'm sure you could do that in those too. But this is nice because it just kind of grows as you're doing it versus having to say in advance, well, I need a really big space. Right. So. Very interesting. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And then you mentioned Canva. Now, of course, I'm sure, you know, we all use Canva to some degree, but it sounds like that's where when you're ready to present to a consumer, you're spending some time and you're creating. Is that typical, Jillian? Do a lot of designers use Canva for that? I feature? think a lot of them do. And like, so I started using Canva. Um, Alicia still likes to use InDesign. Sometimes I like to use InDesign. But again, for me, it was like, I love InDesign because I can be, I like the rigidity of it. Like I like knowing that everything is spaced exactly like 10 pixels apart and snap to the grid and all that stuff. And, um, but I did love Canva just like being in my browser, easy to open. I didn't have to worry about like photos getting dropped because like it didn't know where they were. It was on that computer versus this computer. Um, And so I just started using it. And again, it was like, well, this is so easy. It's so easy to bring pictures in. It's so easy to remove the backgrounds. Um, And then there's a lot of templates out there. So like we've purchased Mm -hmm. templates from ID Co Studio um, for our communication and for other things. And so it's easy to get templates set up or buy templates and then use it that way. And like, you know, it's got most of the fonts in it. So you don't have to like, if you want a font, you don't have to go download it and install it and then make sure everybody else has the same font on their computer. If you're using the same file, things like that are why cloud-based. That's in Canva. That's in Canva. So like, you know, if you have a special font that you want to use for your brand and like somebody else doesn't have it installed and they use InDesign, it's going to break it. 
versus oh, okay. like if it's Canva, if it's in Canva, it's in there. So in there. again, it's like collaborative, you know, where you can both work on something. And if you're both in there, I think you can see like in Mila note, if Alicia and I are both in there, we can see our, tr- our cursors and things. So, oh, fun. yeah. Yeah. She's like, wait, move that over. No, move that back. (laughs) I want it there, Jillian. I want it there, Alicia. (laughs) Okay. So, so in design, uh, that's now that's interesting because I've never heard of that until you mentioned it today. Oh, so is that like a, that's an Adobe product, an Adobe product. So, and it's supposed to be kind of the same um, functions as Canva, but I'm hearing different. It's like that presentation type of a product. Is that what that is? So I'm not a graphic designer. So if anybody's listening, don't like, you know, get upset if I get this wrong, but my, 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 uh, understanding from when I taught is that Photoshop is for like editing photos. Some people love to use it for mood boards and design boards and things like that too. Illustrator is for um, vector images, logos, things like that. And InDesign is for laying out books, like so multi-page documents. So like if you're writing a book, you would write it in InDesign because it um, is set up to do that kind of thing. So like when we were in school and we were laying out like multiple design boards, we taught all of those programs and then the students would ultimately pick which one they liked the best. And because you could do all the same things um, in um, InDesign that you could, like you can't, you can do some things in InDesign that you can't do in Illustrator or in Photoshop and vice versa or whatever, but like ultimately you could get done what we needed to get done. And so people would just pick, well, this is my favorite. Okay. So got it. Got um, it. but like InDesign is for formatting multi-page documents. Okay. Okay. Interesting. All right. So the thing is, and then of course, you know, the one thing that we didn't really talk about, but I think your point to me, even before our conversation started on air is that the Google suite of services and Dropbox, probably most of us are fairly familiar with that at this point, but do you want to give an overview about the way your company utilizes these two things and how it incorporates? You've mentioned it here and there. Oh, but, sure. You know. So like Google, like obviously Gmail, calendaring so having shared calendars so everybody can see um we have a calendar even like for our office so we know like if a meeting is being held at the office that's got its own calendar and like when the cleaning lady is coming or when like a service person is going to be there so like we know okay don't schedule a meeting at that time right because we don't have a big enough space that you could have probably multiple client meetings at the same time so things like that um and then also see we can see like oh somebody's on vacation or they have an appointment like where is that person so that's all shared and everybody can see it so that's really great there's no way i would go back to like not having that type of organization um and then we're using google drive for um some storage and mostly it is for things that are at like you can edit. So like a document, like a word, you know, word processing document or a spreadsheet. So um, we use, so I use a Mac. Alicia has a Mac and a PC. I'm going to get a PC. We've got people on Macs, people on PCs, right? Throughout the office. So it was like, you know, not one person's not going to use pages and one person's going to use word. Right. Like this is, right. that's crazy town. Right. Right. So, <laughs> uh, so that way using the Google suite, we can just have everything in Google drive. So everybody could access it again. And then everybody has the software. And again, like you can install it on your phone, your iPad, whatever, and you can edit it, but also, and then again, I'm sure you can do this in, um, Microsoft at this point too, but you can assign people to like, so like we get a suspense report every couple of weeks from our accountant and there's all the charges on it. She doesn't know what they are. And I just at our procurement manager and I'm like, you do this, you do this, you do this, and I'll take care of these ones. And then they can, right. they can check it off. And so, um, it's really nice in that way. And also there's the history aspect of it and how you can see that, oh, somebody edited that cell um, and this is what they did to it. And so that's why that changed and when. So that kind of stuff has been really helpful. And then just for Dropbox, Dropbox is everything else. So that's like um, photos. Like the filing cabinet. It's a filing cabinet. It's PDFs. (laughs) And it's also, so we use Chief Architect for drafting. So that's Mm. where all of those plan files are at. Um, they need to live. I know there's some people that run their entire business off Google Drive. We have not found that to work for us. Um, Mm. And I've heard other people have the same issues with like not syncing or, um, and I don't know if it's a Mac issue, but it it gets dropped Mm. off. So um, that's why we have two separate 
kind of storage systems. But the way I think of it in my mind is Google Drive is for everything that's changeable and then Dropbox is for plans and everything that isn't changing. So PDFs. Smart. So very yep. smart. I love it. So, One of the things that I have learned in this, you know, the journey of running an actually completely virtual business, right? Like window works is paper, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And we've gotten to a lot of digital and we're getting there, but I always say, it's like you can turn a speedboat on a dime, but an ocean liner that like <laughs> that turn is slower, right? So it's a 40 year old ocean liner. And it's like, we're trying to make the turn into the 21st century or whatever century we're in. <laughs> right. But this business like literally started digitally, virtually. Mm -hmm. And one of my hindsight lessons, and it's pretty obvious, I'm sure to anybody, you're going to be like, well, of course, duh. But if you're starting your business now and you're starting to organize your drive and your Dropbox is naming conventions. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. What a pain in the neck, not having a thought to naming conventions from the beginning. Yep. I mean, things like, like we're, we're knee deep into planning Luann live 2023, as you and I are talking. And, you know, there's lots of collateral information that we've created over the years, email sequences, you know, photographs that we can use to create graphics and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, and I literally said today, I said, here's how we call it. It's capital L, capital N, the word live with a capital L, then it says the thing that it is, and then it says the year. So if it's LN live photos, 2023, like, or 20, because what happened was Stephanie Hamilton from Hamilton Creatives was like, I need more photos of the live event. And so we did the virtual event in 2021. But the live event we did in 2019. And um, Mariali says, I spent an hour between the Google Drive and the Google Dropbox trying to find photos. She goes, I don't know where they're. And I said, oh, because they're probably labeled Mike Von Tassel, <laughs> who is the photographer that took the pictures, like Mike Von Tassel photos. You know what I mean? So it, it drives you to drink. I mean, it really does. If you don't think about this in the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the things are spelled out Lou Ann live uh -huh. or Lou Ann Nigara live. And it's like, oh, sweet yep. Jesus. So like yeah. for us, so in my ideal world, everything would be named the same way. And so, you know, Sandra Funk and her system, every client has a three letter code, right? Mm. So in my ideal world, it's three letter code for the client, dash, whatever the thing is, all words separated by dashes, and then dash year. So 2023.month06.28 right? Nice. And so that way, you know, I can search by, cause, um, it'll strip all that stuff out. But what I always look at is how are things sorted? Right. right. So I want things. So like, you know, I'll preface like whatever the thing is, like, let's say we've got a whole bunch of plan files. So it'll be like three digit dash kitchen, three digit dash bathroom. I want them all sorted together in order of the date. So if you, if you, if you name them that way, everything will get sorted client room date. So right. it's, that's how I'm, I want them to sort, right? <laughs> yes. That's the yeah. thing. It's crazy. It's crazy. And the thing is that, you know, you learn this stuff the hard way, mm -hmm. or you hear somebody talk about their hard lesson in a conversation like this, and you go, you, you go back and you start right now reclassifying and naming conventions, right? Yeah. So the naming conventions are super important and we definitely, I want those standardized all the time because it just makes it so much easier to find stuff. So um, one thing I would mention, so there's a lot of other systems we use, like we use Calendly for calendar and we use Typeform for um, questionnaires. But the other one that we brought on this year that I think was born out of a pain point for me was design spec. So mm -hmm. if people aren't familiar with design spec, it's a software for writing specifications. So it looks very intimidating when you log into it because it is uh, applicable to um, commercial projects as well. So if you're, you know, a smaller scale residential firm, it could seem like overkill. Mm. But, you know, here's where I go back to 
my uh, industrial engineering roots that I just can't, I can't let go of. So every time you enter the same information in multiple places, that's an opportunity to get it wrong, right? For like a mistake to be made. And so we had been using, managing our specifications for renovations and new construction in Google Sheets. And we had a project, it was a new construction and there were tons of bedrooms and we had all these different ceiling fans And some of them were the same model, but different colors or different models, but different colors or whatever. And then they all had spec sheets attached to them. Well, um, I found I was trying to get the specs ready for the client and the client actually started finding errors, which is super embarrassing, right? So it's, it took me like four hours to go through and go through every line item in their lighting list and figure out like, okay, this is the correct light in the correct room with the correct color, with the correct price. And why do we have the same spec sheet downloaded five times for the same fan? Like, why are there five lines for the same fan five different times that the SKU got copied and pasted wrong, right? And so after I figured this out, I was like, this is crazy that it took me this long to figure this out. But it's also crazy that we're writing a spec five times for the same thing, right? Right. So um, I was like, I looked at design spec before. I'm like, we're going to this because if there's a record for something, there should be one record for the same thing. So like if you have a tile that you're using in a house and it's being installed in six different rooms in the same size and the same color, there should be one spec for that tile. And then it says, I need a hundred square feet here and 200 square feet here and 300 square feet there. And if by, if the orientation of it changes or there's something you need to call out or whatever then duplicate the spec sure but if it's literally the same thing it should be entered one time because every time you change it that's an opportunity to screw it up right so um so we started using design spec which is a database format and so it's really great because it has all these pre-formatted spec sheets so like if you create a tile Um, You create it once and you can copy it and reuse it. You can assign it to different rooms. You can copy it to another project if you've used it before. But what's so great about it is after you get everything entered for the whole house, you can export those reports in different ways. So you can have like multiple pictures attached to a spec. You can download the manufacturer's like installation instructions or spec sheet or tear sheet and attach it to that spec. And then so when you print out all the full page specs, it will attach it behind it. So you print it and your printer spits out the manufacturer's spec sheet right behind it. So you can do it that way, but you can also print it like as a matrix, like as a table. So like, let's say it's just paint, right? And you've put all the paint in here. You can print all the paint out as a full page spec because maybe in some rooms there's like some really detailed information or whatever. But if it's pretty cut and dry, you can just print it all out in a table and you can have a little picture of the swatch and just like spit the same information out in like a two page document versus like a 30 page document. Wow. So it's really nice. Like if you just need a quick, you know, a couple pagers to put for reference at the front of a section in your binder to take with you to a job site or whatever, you can do that, but you can also PDF or print out like a full spec document. And the thing that's really great about it too, is you can run filters on it. So you can say, I only want the tile or I only want the tile that's coming from this vendor. So here's Mm. all the specs that are getting purchased through ProSource and send that off to them to get pricing information. And it's super slick and easy that way um, to just generate these super professional looking reports um, that are really powerful in like, five or six different formats and you can save them so that you can reuse them over and over again. So that was just born out of like, I'm not entering the same information more than (laughs) once or printing the same spec sheet more than once or whatever for literally the exact same thing. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Well, that's like, you know, it's, it's inefficient. And like you said, you're begging for a mistake to be made period. Right. You're just like saying, okay, which one of these is going to be a mistake today? Yay. Yeah, like if you change, like let's say the price changes and you forget to update one of the rows in Google Sheets, you know, you could have a huge miscalculation on what the pricing is versus if it's just in one spot, then, right, you know, right. it'll get updated yeah, for everywhere. I love it. Yeah. I love it. The only thing before I let you go that we didn't talk about one way or another, off air or on air, and I'm just curious, is is are you using any AI at this point in your firm? 
not in the firm, but I'm smiling because, so like I said, I just love this stuff, right? And know, so, right? Um, you know who's great at this is Leslie Carruthers in yes. her Facebook group, right? She's scheduled to be interviewed. It's been on the books for about four months. Oh. By the time she gets in my, you know, my calendar, it'll be old hat. But she yeah. did reach out last January to say, can I talk about AI? <laughs> yeah, so I've been playing with... Um, chat GPT and I, I paid for a subscription just to see like, Oh, what could it do? And I found this, um, there's some really great AI Instagram accounts that will teach you like how to use chat GPT and how to get good at it. So like in no way is chat GPT like a replacement for writing your own copy or your own right. stuff. Like you can't, you can't just take it verbatim out of there. No. But the best advice I've heard is you can use it for idea generation. So you're like, you've got, um, writer's block, right? Or you can't yeah. think of how to say the same thing again. So you can tell it like, hey, uh, ChatGPT, write me 10 different blog posts about X, Y, Z, right? And it'll split right. them out. And some of them might be garbage, but some of them you're like, oh, I could tweak that or I could do that or whatever. And then you could say like, hey, for the five that I like, you know, for these five, write me like five headlines that would go in that blog post. And so like, you know, you can just use it to be like, oh yeah, I didn't think of that or whatever. So I've been playing with it for that just to like get ideas and like uh, for right overcoming writer's block. But one of the really um, cool tutorials that I saw on Instagram was about asking chat GPT to um, ask you 20 questions about your firm. And then you like, so you're saying like, Hey, chat GPT, chat GPT act as a professional copywriter. Ask me 20 questions that about my firm that would help that I can answer that would help you get to know me better so that you could write good copy for me. And then it gives you 20 questions and you answer it. And then you stay in that same thread and you'd be like, okay, chat GPT, knowing what you know now about my ideal client, act as a professional copywriter and write me three 300 word emails that I could use to send in a welcome sequence to new subscribers. Whoa. And so again, you're not taking this and just copying and pasting it, but you're like, Oh right. yeah. Like, but you're not staring at the blank page anymore. No. And you're, that's the thing you're getting idea. You're thinking, you know, maybe getting ideas of things you'd never thought of before, or it leads you down a path or it like plants a kernel of an idea. So that's been really fun and interesting, and I enjoy doing that. And just totally non-interior designer business related, there is a plugin for Spotify. So you could be like, hey, Chappie GPT, I am a 44-year-old woman who came of age in the 80s and 90s and loved um, Alanis Morissette, Ace of Base, and um, the Cranberries when I was in high school. Make me the perfect summer playlist. And it'll spit out 20 songs and put them right in Spotify for you. Whoa. Yes, that's super fun. That is interesting. Yeah. I hadn't heard about that, right? Yeah. So anyway, um, that's fun. And then because of <laughs> Leslie, I did start playing with Mid Journey and I was having a really hard time with it and I couldn't get anything that looked any good at all. And so um, I think I saw this tip on Instagram. I went to Chat GPT and I was like, hey, Chat GPT, I want to generate a Mid Journey room, a rendering of a room in Mid Journey of a mid century modern kitchen. And I want it to look like this and this and this and have these things in it. Write me the prompt for Mid Journey. Once oh, I started doing that, the images like were amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I wasn't Isn't saying that the right thing. Crazy! Things. You weren't asking the right things in mid journey. No, I didn't know how to. But ChatGPT to- knew what to how to do it. <laughs> yes, and so <laughs> I was telling it like, "Hey, I want like a kitchen inspired by Stephen Gambrell and Tom Felicia and dark tones for a masculine, you know, home. Like whatever, just like telling it like a bunch of things I wanted, and then and I wanted to be photorealistic, and I wanted to like have big, huge windows and blah, blah, blah. So write me a prompt for that. And it did. And once it started, if I had just wrote that in mid journey, I was getting garbage. Once I started running it through chat GPT and then putting in mid journey, the images got really good. Oh, isn't that fun? Yeah. Oh my God. That's see, that's the thing. I like, I am love it too. I love chat GPT. We have, there's a podcast, um, AI that, um, my daughter is using at her podcast right now. We're not using it here yet. I'm not sure if I feel the spot is right for us over here yet. But I also know that that's silly to be thinking that way. So I'm open to it. Um, but we're, we're working towards what, how we can use it. My thing is, is, is that it's, I don't want to look at the blank page. Mm-hmm. I don't want to look at the blank page and I've utilized humans for that. Like I will Voxer. I, I, 
get me started. Where am I going with this? Blah, blah, blah. You know, like I can't tell you the number of times Stephanie has generated video prompts for me. Mm -hmm. Like here, Luann, Diana has written out lists of here's the things that you could make a video. Like, what do I need to torture my poor humans on this? Like they can be doing other things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I think it's, I think it's awesome. I just love it. And I also too, we don't, copy and paste that's reason you don't copy and paste anybody's stuff I don't care who it is that's a silliness well it still sounds a little artificial and sometimes like they use weird language and you still need it to sound like yourself yes. you know so I'm not and also like if you're using it for um blog posts Google's pretty good at detecting it and so you can get penalized yes. if you're just copying and pasting yeah, directly and from pasting it. it so you don't want to do that because you could end up yeah. hurting yourself versus benefiting sure. yourself so yeah no it's true I feel like um it's so it, what I what I like it for a lot is the things I already know I know but I don't want to sit here and, and drain my brain to come up with them mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying yeah. and it's like oh yeah you know like I one of the first things that I did was like what are 10 reasons a homeowner should why they should consider having an awning on their home mm -hmm. and it literally, and I like read the list and I was like, there isn't anything on this list that is not true. And I don't, I can't think of anything that's not on this list. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then like, the thing is now you just like go and you do a video about mm -hmm. it. Like, but I still got to talk it. I still got to be it. I still got to put my own knowledge there, but I'm now just looking at the 10 things that they made up for me and I'm not yeah. like did I leave five out you know yeah anyway I think it's fun I like it's it's fun too and I love I like using it for fun things like you just mm -hmm. said like you know I didn't know about the Spotify thing but for things that have nothing to do with work yeah. too it's just like oh what do you know that I don't know yeah. GBT mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's pretty funny so anyway well my friend that was great I knew it would be I'm so glad that you took the time to do the second interview with me and run through all of the technology Geez, um, you know, just like what's so funny is here you are a tech person been listening to the show for a hundred years and you listen to Hilaire Pickett Martins and you get a, a thing. So this is the thing. It's like if somebody listening just gets one new idea that we've done our job, mm -hmm. right? That's yep. how I feel. About That's it. how I so, feel about it. Yep. Yep. So thank you so much. I appreciate your being here today, Jillian. Oh, thank you, Luann. Okay, so I would be completely remiss if I did do an entire episode on technology and not give a shout out and a thank you to our sponsor, My Doma Studio. My Doma Studio is your complete designer toolkit. My Doma makes it easy to streamline your processes, track your projects, communicate with your clients, and get organized. It's created by designers for designers, specifically to address what you need as a interior design business owner. I've said countless times that the systems and processes are how you reach the next level of profitability in your business. My Doma Studio makes it easy to do that. And you can get 20% off your first three months by going to mydomastudio.com forward slash a well-designed business. And of course, My Doma Studio will be with us at Luann Live and they have put in a gift for you in our box of money. So if you want to know a little bit about what I'm talking about, head over to Luann Live com to learn more. All right. Now, did this episode give you any ideas? I mean, I've got about 20 new things I want to try out. But first, I think I'm going to ask ChatGBT to make me a Spotify list, right? Love that. The thing about it is, is technology isn't slowing down. But that doesn't mean it must overwhelm or slow us down, right? Especially when so much of this technology is is aimed at making our lives easier and our days more productive. And that is why I get excited about having guests like Jillian on the show who can kind of break it down and give us that advice in real time, right? You don't have to use all of Jillian's technology suggestions, right? In the first episode that we did together in April, she explained that her brain works differently than many of ours do. As an engineer, she is trained to determine how things work best and most efficiently. She's wider to seek out those systems and solutions. But the thing is, no matter how your brain functions, I believe you would be doing yourself and your business a disservice by not looking into how technology can, you know, augment your business and help you do it better. 
Try a few things out, see what works best, and keep in mind that just because something works for one area of your business doesn't mean it will work in another area. Think of tech like a cafeteria. You don't have to eat your whole meal at the salad bar. You can pick and choose based on your needs and your wants, okay? Let's look back through what Jillian is using and how she uses it. All right. First, she uses both Asana and Bootcamp. It might seem a lot to operate on both systems, but it makes sense when you understand why and how she's using both. Asana is an internal tool for her. Clients don't use it. She can keep everything she wants there. But Basecamp is where she does her client facing work. For her, it's clean, uncluttered, and the only info that they need, she puts there. Only the info that they need, she puts there, right? It works through email too, so the client doesn't have to download a new app if they don't want to. All right. I'm ready to get practically every single one of my businesses off email. So I love any tools that mention how we can do that. And of course, I said to you, Window Works is going to be moving to my Doma Studio for their, um, you know, communication and client management of designer related projects when we work with you guys as the trade. Okay. Sarah Danielli, the creator of my Doma Studio, was on the show not long ago also discussing how the industry is in the middle of a digital transformation. So if that has any interest to you, if you like to know the cutting edge, what's going on, head over to episode 879. We'll link it in the notes. Now, you know, I, I mean, just don't get me started on email again, right? But we have to communicate somehow. I like Voxer. Jillian uses Slack. She's got me a little bit curious about it. Might be something to look into. And this is really the crux of this episode. It's if something piques your interest, you don't have to adopt it. You don't have to go all in. You can start to work it in certain areas and see if it improves your life. Okay. Another tool that she mentioned was Harvest. Okay. Jillian could be tracking time and expenses within her project management platforms. And you may prefer that, but she uses Harvest because it's right there on her phone. I happen to know that my Doma Studio also functions right through your phone, just saying, and you can do your time tracking there as well. Okay. Um, we talked about a lot of other tools. Milanote sounds interesting and fun for designers like you guys. Google Suite, of course, and Dropbox, many of us use. ChatGBT, many of us are using that already. I hope that you'll think about, um, you know, making your life a little easier with that. Okay. So here's the thing. We also have a category on my website. If you go to luannigara.com, if you go to a well-designed business podcast and you click on collections, you will see the collection called technology. Okay. Now, and th there's a lot of shows there on technology, but a key takeaway that you have to understand is a show that I did on technology five years ago, mm, right now, there's always going to be information there. I stand by that. Okay. Cause a lot of times the talk of technology is the nuance and learning how somebody uses a particular tool. And that opens up the idea for you. That's what I love. It's like, you know, um, when Hil Hilaire Pickett Martin was on the show, it was, Oh, wait, you only use this one platform for this one thing. And that's when I was like, oh, Sarah, we want to use my Doma Studio, not for our whole business, but for, just for our trade business. So, but keep in mind, tech from a show five years ago might not be the most up to date when we're actually talking about the tech. Okay. So I hope you found this helpful today. I know I did. Jillian, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you sharing all these insights and this expertise that you have come by through trial and error and saving us a lot of that trial and error. All right. And thank you for listening. I appreciate you so much. And I have to say, I don't ask this that often, um, but real life reviews, wherever you listen to the podcast and Apple, you know, podcasts or Spotify or iHeart are so appreciated. I really do love them. I listen to them. I read them, I should say. And what I mean is 
once I read them, I listen to them. So if you are saying something that you really like, then I'm like, oh, do more of that. If you say something you don't like so much, then I try and change it. <laughs> My point is, it's a great place for you to communicate with me what works for you on the show, but also to show others why you show up and listen to the show, why it's important to you. And I appreciate when you do take the time to review. All righty, send in your big hugs. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day. Thank you.